When I think of summer, I think of big places. Like when I was 12 years old, I saw the ocean for the very first time, shining at me like a silver face, beautiful, welcoming, it just filled my heart. And then when I was 22, my grandmother and I took a cogwheel train to the top of the Alps to go above the clouds so we could see the snow in August. It was wondrous. And then when I was 45, finally, at great long last, I got to stand on the edge of the rim of the Grand Canyon, puckered my belly button, and I understood what the word wonder really, really means. But you know, when I think of my favorite memory of summer, it's not a big place. It's kind of small. I'm standing out in the hot sun like today. It's hammering down on my head and I hear cicadas buzzing in my ears and I'm struggling to hold up a board. My husband's on the other end of the board just hammering away on our dream, which was to build a house at the edge of the world. And now 40 years later, we're still here at the edge of the world. Except for our beloved Amicalola Electric Power Company, we're still responsible for our infrastructure like water and sewage, garbage, and security from bears and polecats, rabid raccoons, coyotes, snakes. Some of them good, but they're still scary. And the bad ones that are really scary and then there are the bugs, creeping, crawling, slithering, flying, stinging, winging, humming in my ears. And yet sometimes it is so peaceful out here at the edge of the world that we can have a truly Zen moment of hearing the sound of one butterfly wing flapping. It's not to say that this life is without challenges. We've been challenged from the beginning. And I want to tell you about the greatest challenge we ever had, although at the time I didn't know it was the greatest challenge. We had just moved into a tent beside the creek when this big old truck that's kind of like a logging truck just came slipping and sliding a mile down our mud bog of a driveway. And the driver dropped off a bunch of poles because we we're going to build what you call a post and beam construction a round house actually it was ten sided with a big pole right in the center and the driver when he he got ready to pull out he said I hope I never have to come down this driveway again y'all are crazy <laughs> I guess we were but when he left, we spent the rest of the day trying to figure out how we were going to move that big pole. So we finally got to come along, and Rick just kind of slowly ratcheted it, moved it like this, so that it was leaned up against the mountain that is our backyard. And we had the heavy end of the pole sitting on a hole in the ground, that we were going to slide the pole into if we ever could pick it up. We just never could pick it up. But we were full of youthful enthusiasm and we had faith. So we just kept working on everything else. And then lo and behold, one Saturday morning, really early, Big Al, a friend of ours, came up from Atlanta with six of his friends. It's about nine o'clock in the morning and they were already at least a couple of sheets to the wind because they were going to have a big adventure day starting at our house. Because you see, Big Al had it in his mind that he might also like to build a house with his own hands. And he wanted to see how we were doing. So we talked, showed him around, and all of a sudden he said, Well, how y'all going to put that big pole up in the center? And we just looked at him and said, you got a helicopter? And he said, come on, boys, let's put this pole up. 
And then without even thinking, the nine of us all of a sudden had it lifted up to our knees. He kept hollering. He said, to the shoulder, boys, on three. One, two, three. And somehow we lifted it to our shoulders. And at that moment, that's when I felt the real weight of what we were doing. I was scared to death. But he kept talking. And he said, boys, that pole has got to go in the hole the very first time. No second chances on this. On three, push with all your might. One, two, three. And we were, oh, all of us were just pushing with all our might. I mean, we were hollering, scrabbling, just sweating, crying. I, I was scared to death and it slowly just kept inching up, but it just wasn't going in. And just as I started thinking about which way I was going to jump when the pole fell, it just slid right down into the hole like Rick said it was going to do. And we just jumped around and hooted and hollered and patted each other on the back. We were so excited. And I said, well, let me fix you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to celebrate. And Big Al went, oh my gosh, we have to get going right now because if we're not in Atlanta by two o'clock to meet our wives for a late dinner and a long happy hour, we're gonna be in big trouble. Because see, tonight we're going to see the Rolling Stones. And with that, they just turned around and left. And we blew them kisses as, we wa as they walked away. And they kept turning around and saying, we're going to come back and help you, we promise. But you know how way leads on to way. None of them ever came back, including Big Al. But I tell you what, every time... I look up at my beautiful umbrella ceiling. I, I send them blessings. And I pray with all my heart that they have had the miraculous intervention, something like we had that day, and that they have achieved all of their dreams too. A couple years ago, I wrote this song for my husband, the Vitruvius, the architect of our experience out here in the woods. And when I sang it to him for the first time, I said, Honey, do you remember Big Al and the Wild Boys of Summer? I knew he did. Of course, we talk about it every time we talk about how we built the house, which is something that we do from time to time. And he just smiled. And then I sang him the song. Of course, it's called Dreamers. Granny said we were dreamers. We get lost inside the dream, but we built a life outside, beside a mountain stream. We learned to use a pitchfork and a shovel and a pail. We toughened up our fingers with a hammer and a nail. Times I thought we would make it, even one more struggling day. We'd limp along for weeks with nothing good to say. Then the sun would come and find us on a peaceful day of bliss. And we'd heal all our wounds with a happy little kiss. You're the sunshine in my eyes, the kiss on my happy lips. If I had to start again, I'd do it just like this. No, I wouldn't change a thing, but I'd try a lot harder to make my voice softer, my spirit so much stronger. I'd be more forgiven, though I'll never get it right. I thank you every minute for my wonderful life. You're the sunshine in my eyes, the kiss on my happy lips. If I had to start again, I'd do it just like this. Don't want to live in a mansion, want to walk beside the stream. Get lost like Granny said in our sweet mountain dream. You're the sunshine.